Joining us now, one of the truth seekers, Senator Bob Cocker, Republican of Tennessee, just back from Libya. Senator, uh, welcome on board. Thanks very much for doing the program. When you were in Libya, did you get a sense that the Libyans want justice here, that they want to bring the perpetrators, uh, you know, to hold them accountable? They do. I met with the prosecutor general. I met with the president of the GNC. I met with the head of the military, and I met with the foreign minister who um, obviously deals with us directly. This is a country with almost no institutions. I mean, they, there's, this is a country that's almost being built from scratch because Gaddafi tore down all the institutions of government. So in fairness, it's going to be very difficult, but I do think there's a will. I think that, Geraldo, one thing people miss about the people of Libya, uh, unlike many other places in the Middle East where we've been, they are very appreciative uh, for what America has done to, to help overthrow Gaddafi and cause them to have a chance for a representative government. Geraldo, I think that you're hitting actually at the key of why this has been so, such a bizarre presentation by the administration. Uh, it's, it's been beyond me as to why they've handled this the way that they have. But the fact is, in Libya and so many other places in the Middle East, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda affiliates, uh, violent extremists are, are actually on the rise. It's harder because there is no really central control like there was before. In many ways, it's harder to gather intelligence. When you don't have a government that has the capability of really going against them, there's a vacuum that's created, and certainly extremists are filling that in Libya and many other places where the Arab Spring has taken hold. On to the uh, cover-up aspect of this. I was speaking with your colleague, Senator Johnny Isaacson, the Republican of Georgia, and he seems to indicate that it is in all likelihood at the desk of the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton where much of this responsibility lies. What say you? I know that, that high up in the administration, they immediately knew this was a terrorist act. And for people to be out five days later on television, on all the Sunday shows, for all the comments to have occurred, what it makes me believe, and this is my opinion, is that the administration, the White House, the political arm, felt like that if Americans thought this was a terrorist act, then there would be a chink uh, against a president who is, you know, let's face it, you know, mission accomplished, spiked the football, uh, basically has acted like he's conquered al-Qaeda. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, it's, a, it's a troublesome world out there. And I think this was really more about the politics of that. But I think at the highest levels of our government, uh, there's been an effort to keep this from appearing to be a terrorist act so that people would believe that in, we vanquished uh, terrorism uh, while this election is underway. But aren't you saying that the administration lied? Yeah, the, the Let me just put it this way. I don't like to use words like that, and it infuriates me when I see people do that in the public arena. But I'll tell you this, uh, there's no question in my mind, there's not a cell in my body that doesn't believe that they knew immediately uh, that this was a terrorist act. Why was Ambassador Stevens in Benghazi? Was he possibly on some secret mission? Is it possible he was freelancing and decided to go there on his own? No, no, no. he had had meetings there with local leaders. Uh, he had just said goodbye to the Turkish ambassador. They had had dinner together. He had walked him out to, to the front of the uh, consulate. It was a calm night. There was no activities whatsoever. He came back into the building, and uh, all of a sudden, this assault came about. Do you think someone ratted him out then? Do you think someone in the Libyan government is culpable? Well, I just don't know. I mean, uh, you know, you've been to these places, Geraldo. I've seen you cover uh, places like this. but. You know, Libya is a place that really uh, is governed by militias. They're very fragile right now, uh, Geraldo, because of all the security issues that, that exist within that country. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, but I, I will say this. It was obviously known to people in the community that were meeting with him that he was there. And, uh, you know, the initial comments about the fact that he was, you know, on vacation and he just happened to come in and check on folks, that was totally fictitious. We'll watch, obviously, with great interest that probe as it goes forward. I know you also made a stop on the Jordanian-Syrian border. Is this region spinning out of control? The Arab Spring has no doubt ushered in. Uh, on one hand, hope for people as they, they try to create a representative government. On the other hand, uh, there is no question that in the, in the vacuum that has come with governments that are being formed, uh, extremist groups are taking advantage of that. And I, I would say that the region is very, very fragile. 
uh, maybe as fragile as it's been in a long, long time. And actually, Geraldo, I get the feeling that, you know, just a few things, a few strings being pulled in one direction or another really could uh, create and unleash uh, a lot of problems in that area. And obviously, Syria itself, I mean, just look at it.